Hello, everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to this episode of Your Arlington Dollar, which is a, we have an annual ritual on Your Arlington Dollar uh, of speaking with our Deputy Town Manager, Sandy Pooler, about the upcoming budget um, at around this time of year. And that's what we get to do today. So first of all, I just want to welcome you. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Sandy. We always appreciate talking to you. Always a pleasure. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, really, I know <laughs> I know this is a very uh, labor intensive time of year for you. So very nice uh, for you to carve out the time to sit and talk to us about what's going on. So the topic this year is the FY 2023 budget. Um, and uh, we find ourselves talking to you in early February this year. Sometimes we talk to you in January, sometimes in February. Uh, that means, uh, for our purposes today that we're about three weeks or so out from the mid-February date at which uh, our town manager has to submit the budget um, for uh, that then various bodies will review and give input on. Um, and all of this leading up to town meeting, uh, which starts in two and a half months or so, right? Yeah. Um, I'm, sh I'm sure it seems like a comfortable amount of time away now, and uh, it will all be surprised when it gets here. Um, anyway, I just want to ask you uh, to start um, by, in a place that we've started before, and I do want to tell our audience, we're not going to go into the kind of exhaustive detail, I don't know if that's good or bad news for you, we're not going to go into the exhaustive detail we often have in the past, but I'll refer you to the fact that on ACMI's YouTube page, you can find as much information as you want, as well as, of course, you can do that off the town's webpage, et cetera. But uh, on ACMI's YouTube page, you will find Budget 101, uh, which uh, Sandy did with us a few years back, and which is still pertinent in all of the details in terms of how the cycle works, et cetera. So we're not going to be doing that today, but let me ask you to start with just a brief overview of what that budgetary cycle looks like over the course of the year and where we find ourselves ourselves now? So in October, we really started by doing our initial forecast for our revenues. We sent letters out to department heads and uh, gave them monetary allocations and then started setting up meetings with them to go over both what's in their budget now already and um, we allowed them to make requests for additional monies. Um, that took us pretty much through uh, early December. And then at that point, we decided what things we could add and what things we couldn't. Um, overall this year, I think we had something in the order of about $2 million of uh, extra asks from people. And when it came right down to it, we were able to fund uh, a couple of them, <laughs> uh, but most of them we had to say no to. Uh, and I will get back to that in just a second. Uh, that all culminated in a, a manager's budget, which under the Town uh, Manager Act, our, our town charter, is due on January 15th to be delivered to the Select Board and the Finance Committee. So we put that all together, and now the Finance Committee and the Select Board are going through their processes of meeting with department heads, reviewing the manager's requests, and getting ready to make their recommendations to town meeting. So let me talk a little bit about the numbers. Um, we have a long range plan here in Arlington, which scopes out our budgets, our revenue and our spending over a five year period. And uh, in that plan, it allows the town side of the budget to grow by 3.25% per year. It also forecasts when we're going to need overrides in the future. We've been looking at that and we've realized that we have to have an override, I think in FY24. Because of that, we've sort of constrained some of our spending on the town side. Uh, this year, we've gone up only 3% instead of 3.25%. That's in line with the previous year, we went up only 2.6%. We've really tried to constrain some of our spending. Uh, it doesn't the town side of spending isn't really gonna make all the difference for how much an override we have, because I'll show you some numbers in a minute. Um, but I do think it's part of the town manager's effort uh, 
not to add a lot of new positions these days and try to constrain some of our spending because we know there's going to be an, another need for an override. Um, it's pretty much can a I, level. Can I ask you, Sandy, excuse me for jumping in, but can I ask you whether the two million that you had said that, uh, you know, in, in cumul cumulatively the department heads had requested um, and you kind of, I think you said it was an extra 2 million and, and some you were, would be able to respond to and uh, the rest not. Um, is that, was that part of what you're talking about as well, where you're trying to constrain spending in these years leading up to a potential override? And so that's why that happened? Yeah, I'd say there's, um, there are two things that are going on. One, there are needed increases that are just basically have to be funded, probably the biggest of which was changes to our trash collection and recycling collection contract. We had just ended a, or just about to end a 10 year contract that we have with a company that picks up the trash from your sidewalks. Um, over the past year or so, there's been a lot of back and forth between trash collection companies and towns about major increases have been imposed in other communities. We kind of held back, kept our powder dry and negotiated. And what we ended up with was uh, a first year increase of 8% in the overall, excuse me, 9% in the overall costs, but then 2% for the next two years for a three year contract. We also kept the system where we have where we don't pay uh, a per tonnage rate for recycling to be picked up. We pay per tonnage for trash, but recycling is just a flat fee. And we think that's a good thing in terms of encouraging recycling here in town. So there's, there's a few things like that that we just had to put into the budget. Then there are a lot of other things where departments have recognized more and more demands from the public for services or more staffing needs or more funding needs for, for things. Uh, most of those, uh, only in one case did we add any staff. We added somebody to help the Zoning Board of Appeals with all its work because we've found that the number of permit requests that have been coming in have outstripped the staff's ability to service the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Historic Commission, both of which you know have to review a number of different plans that people put forward. And then we added a, a few dollars here and there for things like um, upgrading our internet connection for the town to increase the speed of our internet. Our new IT director thought that that was really essential to meet the growing demands. But other than that, we didn't really add much of, of anything. So those are the kind of things that people ask for. And I think they ask for a lot of things again, because I think they see demands from the public. I tell them it's just a truism of budgeting that there are always more demands than there is money. So. That, that's what it was. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I I apologize again for for the fact that I tend to interrupt you and I might really <laughs> mess with your train of thought. But if you can get back to what you were saying before that, um, please do. So, yeah, I think um, what I thought I'd do at this point is just talk a little bit about the numbers. I think I'm going to share my screen a little bit. That would be great. So. I think you see this moving. This is the mm -hmm. manager's budget. And we're going into FY23 here. So um, you can see that overall, we have a revenue budget um, that's going up, that originally was going up about 3%, 2.96%. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the school budget that's going up 5.42%. This is one of the reasons we have a, a structural deficit in town because some of our expenses grow faster than our revenue. Uh, one of the things that we did with the school budget that will be important to people this year is because they had a decline in enrollment, uh, instead of adding money as we have every year for an enrollment growth factor, because they were down 189 students from their previous peak, we cut $1,397,700 out from the growth in the school budget. So you can mm -hmm. see this number here, it's in parentheses, which means it's a negative. Um, we did our usual increase of three and a half percent for 
the regular cost plus adding in the previous year's enrollment numbers and everything, 7% in SPED spending. We added um, $1,030,000, which is the last tier of the amount when we had our last override that we said we would fund for the school strategic plan. And then this year, we're proposing added $970,000 as, as a one-time infusion into the school budget to deal with some of the costs associated with COVID. Uh, there are kids who need remedial help, tutoring, some of them for their kind of emotional uh, needs. Uh, and we know the school department has to deal with those things. So we added that. As you're working with, it's just sticking with the schools for a second, because we've talked about this in the past, um, I recognize uh, those outlays and those classes of, of outlays, uh, of course, the general education and especially the special education costs. And noting as I look across the, the table, just to confirm for people that the special education costs, uh, they go up by 7% a year and that's partly because they're treated differently in terms of how how we can raise uh, raise the those uh those those costs right well um on the one hand it's true that any money in the school budget like this is just taxpayer money it's all just money mm -hmm. um if we have extraordinary special ed costs the state will reimburse us sometimes they have a kind of what they call a circuit breaker if we particularly have to place kids outside of Arlington schools and which gets to be very costly. The state does share in that. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, it's just a trend that was identified a number of years ago. Uh, we look at it from time to time to make sure we're still on track and there's still conversations in the long range planning committee about whether this is still the right number. Um, and we'll continue to talk about that. But SPED is more expensive than regular education and that's why we account for it here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so there are just a couple of other things I, I want to mention that, as I said, there's um, the, we have other education costs, the cost that for Minuteman uh, Regional Technical Vocational High School, which have gone up fairly substantially, partly because a lot more Arlington students are going there than have in the past. Mm -hmm. We have the town budget at $40 million, which is going up at the 3% that I mentioned. We got rid of the MWRA debt shift so that there's no more, uh, there will be no more tax dollars supporting the water and sewer fees that will all be in the water and sewer. And so people's uh, property taxes will see a reduction because of that. Capital is still 5% of the budget. And then we have other fixed costs like pensions and insurance and assessments from the state. And a few other things here to get us to the bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, two big things I wanna point out. One is that by FY25, in this version of the budget, we were projecting a $9 million deficit. The other thing that I want to point out is on the revenue side. There's $5 million of revenue in FY23 and $5 million of revenue in FY24 from ARPA, the American uh, Recovery Plan Act. And, um, that is one-time money that the federal government gave us to make up for the revenue that we lost during these years of COVID because we've had losses in motor vehicle excise tax, hotel motel tax, meals tax, uh, permits. I mean, various things went down. So we are using, it's $5 million to kind of plug that hole and uh, make up for, for some of those losses. So that is a big change in the, the budget and really helped us out a lot. Mm -hmm. It's something we only found out about for sure in December. So um, the feds kind of kept changing their rules uh, <laughs> and we tried to keep up with it. Unfortunately, it's worked out well for us. This is the budget that we presented to the finance committee. And I, if I could just say one thing, I was gonna talk about how we have an updated forecast, but if you have any questions about this, before I go to the updated forecast, let's see if there are any other questions. Yeah, the, I, I wanted to just point out a, a couple of things. So first, um, it looks like the red comes in uh, on the bottom line there, as you as you already pointed out, in uh, fiscal year 2025. And so therefore, right now, 
for, according to your best guesses and estimates, um, that's when we may be looking at um, uh, you know a structural override being necessary in order to address that deficit. So just you know, folks. If I could should... just say one thing about that, I think it's likely we would ask for an override to start going into the FY. 24 budget to sort of build up our override stabilization fund in this year so that we could ask for a smaller override if we do it a year early than if we waited till the next year when the numbers start to get pretty enormous. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we ask for an override, it'll be at a number that we think voters would support. So probably in the spring of 23 is my best guess today as to when you would see an override. Thank you so much for that clarification, Sandy. That's exactly right. And such a good illustration of the kind of, um, you know, really reliable, thoughtful fiscal management that this town uh, is known for. Um, and, you know, just, just understanding that, yes, doing the ask earlier, um, it's it, nobody ever wants to hear that news, but obviously it just makes a lot more sense to try and get out or stay out in front of these building numbers in the way that you just described. So thank you for that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to just point out is how rare it is, but nonetheless, you just have to make accommodations for these things. Uh, you you had uh, a little while back pointed out that the growth factor, uh, it was actually, it's in parentheses in that first column, as you said, uh, the growth factor for student population in the schools, uh, which happened to go down. Um, probably a corresponding, somewhat corresponding number of uh, additional Minuteman students, as you said before. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we are used to those numbers going up and up and up on the enrollment side over these last number of years, but just kind of shows you that you can never tell for sure uh, what the trends are going to be, right? And that you just have to make the adjustments as you go along. That's absolutely right. And I think we think, for example, Minuteman may be attracting more students because they have a brand new uh, facility high school mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be interesting to see as our high school opens up. Uh, we have the, the new wing opening up this month and construction is continuing. It's going to be a beautiful school when it's open. So it will be interesting to see what that does to enrollment too. Absolutely. All right. So you said that, uh, that you have more uh, an updated a uh, bunch of numbers to share with us, I guess. That is true. So uh, I want to show you this, which is now uh, our updated forecast. And uh, you can see the number out, out in FY25 has gone down from over $9 million to, to about $6.8 million. So we had a decrease in the size of the override and the deficit. And that's really because our state aid here in FY23 went up, instead of going up $178,000, it went up $1.4 million because we got a lot more state aid for our education aid, really a reflection of our previous increases in, enro in enrollment, which under the state aid program sort of take a while to catch up, mm -hmm. and uh, some increases in general education aid. Uh, and, and excuse me, general government aid uh, at 2.7%, which matches the state's predictions of its increases in revenue. So um, we will continue to look at state aid numbers as the legislature goes forward with its process and um, we'll make uh, adjustments to this as we go forward into town meeting. Uh, but I just wanted to point this out for the viewers at home because uh, you know they may have heard news about increased state aid we did not increase any of our spending. We were just then using less money from our override stabilization fund and putting more off into the future to reduce the impact on taxpayers. That makes a lot of sense. And I just wanna uh, point out something that uh, I have done in the past, um, but again, it continues to, as I was mentioning to you before we went on, it continues to fascinate and uh, puzzle me. Um, and that is you've just given us updated numbers. Um, and obviously a lot of work went into the first set of numbers and then you had to update them. And the reason why you had to update them in this case, of course, good news in a lot of ways, because the, uh, the 
the governor's budget um, and state aid in the governor's budget uh, was higher than we might have anticipated or certainly than was in previous versions of, uh, of, of our own town budget here. Um, and that, that goes right to something that I just would love to hear your thoughts about. And that is every year, as you said, a town, uh, the town mandates that the town manager's budget be submitted on January 15th. Um, the governor's budget for the state is always just a little bit after that um, and can change things fairly fundamentally or dramatically, I've noticed, at different times over the years. So you're the, <laughs> the main person, I would think, uh, that this falls, uh, you know, falls on. Is this just uh, just something you just kind of shrug about and just say, well, that's just the way it is. This timing is, you know, it makes more work for all of us here, uh, but there's not really much we can do about it. Or do you wish we would? I think uh, it would make sense to have the manager's budget submitted after the governor's budget. So we have more certainty as to state aid, which is really the biggest variable that we try to predict. I know there have been discussions with the select board and the finance committee about this issue, and there's a variety of opinions about this. <laughs> uh, but uh, I would say it, uh, we want to make sure there's enough time for the finance committee to consider the budget. Uh, but I also think it would be wise to put it off probably toward the end of January or something like that, so that when we submit a budget, it's really based on more solid evidence. So that would be my recommendation. Uh, I, I, I just have to say, I would second that. I mean, as a person who on whom none of the burden of this falls, but nonetheless, it just doesn't make sense that every year you have to go through all that work and then, and then just do some more work. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know, to hear we speak about it, hopefully, folks who are in decision-making uh, roles uh, will recognize it and, and, and take action at some point. I think, uh, you know, it would make your January and February much more sensible, I would think. Um, you know, speaking of the burden of, of doing this, there's one thing I wanted to add, which I, I didn't mention to you before, but I'm going to mention now. I am the deputy town manager and finance director, so I oversee this whole process. Um, and I have a management analyst, a woman named Julie Wayman, who's an Arlington resident, who's worked in this office for about three years now. And um, this year I said to Julie, all right, Julie, you've really been doing a good job. I'm throwing you into the budget waters, swim. <laughs> so she really did a lot. She really put the budget together and a lot of the details. We obviously work together a lot, but I want to give credit to Julie for the tremendous work she's done to get the manager's budget to the finance committee um, and um, to, to work on the team here and, and really lead the team with the department heads. Um, I think sometime in the future, you at home will probably hear more directly from Julie. Um, it's been her first year doing the budget. Uh, and I think in the future, it'd be appropriate for her to be speaking to you too. Uh, but I wanted to make sure she got some credit publicly today. Great. Um, we always like to, to uh, be a platform for that kind of message as well. Um, so I want to, you know, before we kind of wrap things up here, let's, let's, let's kind of do a little synopsis for folks. Um, so basically, obviously there's some good news in that there is this $10 million, million of extra infusion from the ARPA funds. Um, of course, those had been that that's something that I had been talking to Adam Chapdelaine, our town manager about consistently over uh, a, a whole lot of months now since it first became apparent that some money was going to be heading in our direction and then we found out how much, etc. So obviously there's going to be an effect from this 10 million being taken out of what was an overall 34 million that had been at least provisionally allotted. Um, so we just want to acknowledge that, right? I mean, obviously, it's good news for Arlington property tax uh, uh, payers, uh, like myself and many others. Uh, so can't argue with that. But, you know, also, it is going to mean that maybe the largest 
does not get extended uh, as far or as deep as it might otherwise have been. So, so initially, uh, the town manager presented a plan to the select board allocating that thirty-four million dollars. Um, it's actually, I think, a precise figure. It's about thirty-five and a half million dollars uh, as it got it's gotten tweaked over time. Mm -hmm. The federal government has tweaked things, but that's <laughs> I think the final number. Um, we will definitely continue to spend that ARPA money on some things that we said originally to the select board we're gonna spend on, such as the $4 million in premium pay to our workers who had to work in person. Um, there definitely, some money is definitely gonna be spent on improvement of our water and sewer system. Uh, there's money going to public health uh, programs and so forth. We've yet to spend uh, money, uh, all of our money on water and sewer, all or much money at all on um, on homeless relief or uh, affordable housing. All those things are going to have to be looked at and presented again to the select board to get their endorsement as we've moved $10 million into the lost revenue column. We had really started it three, so now it's 10. So we are gonna to have to find 7 million from other things. Mm. Uh, the manager is in the process of working through that. He will present that again to the select board, I think probably in the next month. And uh, then it will be publicly available for comment and, and, and vote on the select board. Undoubtedly, there will be public comment about that, no doubt. Um, so uh, you have also, though, during our time today mentioned, uh, I just want to, uh, again, summarize that uh, there, is a, there is a new DPW contract uh, related to trash and recycling, and that, that in general is good fiscal news because I think you like the, the structuring of that. It's a, a bigger cost up or bigger increase up front, but then followed by really minimal increases over the, the, the next couple of years. So that sounds good as well. There's going to be more money going to the schools um, uh, as, <laughs> as seems always to be the case. And of course, as I think very few people in the end argue with because Arlington schools and their excellence uh, are a big part of what makes our community tick. Um, and then finally, you, you were mentioning really kind of minimal staffing changes. That's, that's exactly right. That, that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> All right, anything that we you know should have mentioned or, 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 or covered more extensively, um, do, do you think, or, or, or are we good? Um, I think we're good. I think people will see this come forward to town meeting, uh, be published in, in April from the Finance Committee. Uh, and uh, I, I think my experience at town meeting is that we do a very thorough process ahead of time. So the budget is one of the least controversial things at town meeting. And I hope to keep it that way going forward. <laughs> uh here, here, exactly. To to all of what you just said, yes, it is traditionally one of the least controversial, and thank goodness, right? And let us hope that you continue that streak. Uh, that's that's a good one. Low drama is what we're looking for from this year's town meeting, if possible. Thank all right. Thank you so much for your time again, and best of luck with seeing this through to the finish line, which I know you're 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 still working on. Um, I have been speaking, of course, with our deputy town manager, Sandy Pooler, who is in charge. He's had able uh, assistance from, from Julie, as he has mentioned, uh, but he is in charge of this whole process, and it's a big one, and it matters to all of us. So uh, thanks again for coming on to explain some of the major elements of it. Um, we really appreciate it. We'll see you next year, if not before, um, and good, again, James. wish I you good luck. You. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That's Sandy Pooler, our Deputy Town Manager. I'm James Milan. This has been a conversation about our fiscal year 2023 budget upcoming. And this is your Arlington Dollar. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate Sandy's time and we appreciate yours. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.